envías un montón de mails y no te los responden o te dicen que no están interesados. Bueno, acá Aaron Ross, quien es el autor de Predictable Revenue, libro eminencia en todo lo que tiene que ver con Prospection Outbound, te da algunos consejos sobre cómo hacer que los mails sean respondidos. La clave, cuanto menos. In the Predictable Revenue book, one of the points I made was uh, the best emails. So in the States, we call them cold emails when we're emailing someone who doesn't know us. But any email you send is short and sweet. It's very concise. It's the, the long emails do not get read. So ideally, if you have a phone, the email length, especially if it's a cold email, should be something that I could, uh, if I open it up, something I could read with maybe one swipe, like this, this kind of long, like this long, right? Short, very, because the easier it is to read and the simpler it is to act on, the more responses you will get, right? Reading an email, think about it. When you get emails, it takes work. If you see a long email, don't you think, oh, right? And mo usually a long email means the person is not a good writer. It's a boring email. So short emails, um, usually it's say even 300, three to five sentences is a good, is a good amount. Sometimes even less. I'm trying to think of an example. I don't have any examples in Spanish, but in English, an example could be as simple as, um, hi, Andre, uh, would you mind telling me who is in charge of your marketing? Thanks. It, that's it. It could be that short. Could be a little longer. You say, you know, add a sentence or two about who, what you do. But it can be literally that short, even as short as one or two sentences. Okay, so that's just to, on the hiring side. Going back to Andre's question around the referral approach and going top down. Um, what I learned at Salesforce was that rather than emailing or calling, let's say we want to sell to a VP of sales, a vice president of sales is our, our, our decision maker. Rather than calling or emailing them directly, um, I would email their boss, the CEO. Yes, CEO, who's in charge of sales there? And they would then say, oh, that's Sarah. That's Josefina, right? So to get, I would get work to get referrals from senior person like a CEO down to my decision maker. And so that decision maker is much more likely to respond to me when they've been referred to me by their boss. So the referral approach can work when you're getting referred down to someone or across, but it's a, it's a much simpler and friend, friendlier way to start a conversation to the company than trying to cold call them. Now, do cold calls work? They can work. Should I cold email that decision maker directly? You can try that too. But the referral method is just, it's a great simple way to start. Simple emails, you can work with anybody. And uh, that's really what, that was what helped generate that $100 million at salesforce.com is really the referral method. Bueno, espero que te haya servido el fragmento de esta charla. Si querés ver la charla completa, ahora al final te va a aparecer un link para acceder. También te invito a que te suscribas a mi canal, Primera Reunión, donde vas a poder encontrar las diferentes entrevistas o diferentes charlas con profesionales eh, que están encarando procesos, eh, estructurando procesos de venta B2B eh, y a su vez en mi sitio primerareunion.com también vas a poder encontrar más contenido eh, incluyendo una charla por ejemplo con Aaron Ross, eh, el autor de Predictable Revenue. Bueno, espero que te haya servido.